there are these new coronavirus hotspots that are emerging nationwide, and they are mostly happening in states where vaccination rates are low. In Nevada, state officials are reaching out to the federal government to help deal with the surge in cases and hospitalizations. According to a USA Today analysis, the number of likely COVID-19 patients in the state tripled on July 17th from a month earlier. Local leaders are now taking matters into their own hands by reinforcing some mask regulations. Lilia Luciano is in Las Vegas with more on this. Nevada has the highest positivity rate in the nation, and that combined with a low vaccination rate pushed the governor here to specifically ask for assistance from the federal government, from the Biden administration. We were on the ground with one of those new COVID surge response teams as they worked within local groups that are trying to curb the COVID spread. At this pop-up clinic in Las Vegas, Barbara Collins Givens is trying to get her first COVID vaccine. Givens and her husband both had COVID earlier this month, so while they have to wait a while to get vaccinated, she's telling everyone to get the shot now. They're all going to get it because I told them they need to get it. That's exactly what officials want to happen. It really has become a pandemic of the unvaccinated. Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra says community outreach is the key to curbing rising cases and deaths. Is it lack of access in certain communities to vaccinations or lack of confidence in the vaccines that you're working against? Well, it's a little bit of both, but for our purposes, it doesn't make any difference. We want to support those who want to get out there and get those unvaccinated with the vaccine. The clinic is run by local and state personnel working alongside the newly dispatched federal COVID surge response team. And they're going to concentrate on the lowest uh, vaccination rate areas first and work their way up. The groups identify specific community hotspots, then go into those areas to promote vaccinations. We, have, we try to improve those rates to, so we can save lives. Blocks away on the Vegas Strip, both unvaccinated and vaccinated workers are masking up again after county officials passed the mandate for all indoor employees. But the tens of millions of annual tourists can continue to be maskless. How is the public protected? I mean, we're indoors and there is so much traffic of unmasked people. We're pumping in up to 100% outside fresh air at all times oh. and doing an air cycle about every five to six minutes. MGM Resorts Vice President of Health and Safety when, Strategy, when is, John Flynn, gave us a rare look inside the Aria down. Hotel and Casino. We know that the cleaner air that we could pump in here, it's going to greatly deter the spread for our employees and for our guests, too. The hotel is even offering pop-up vaccination clinics and COVID testing to help protect their employees. We want to try to get every single person vaccinated. The more people we can get vaccinated, the sooner we could put this pandemic behind us. Tourists here, whether they're indoors or outdoors, vaccinated or not, don't need to wear a mask, and very few people are choosing to do so. So Las Vegas, in order to try and reduce the spread of COVID, is creating incentives for people to get vaccinated while visiting. That includes anywhere from free drinks to free tickets for sporting events or even concerts. Vlad and Marie. Lilia, thank you. So for more on this, let's bring in Dr. Bob Lajita. He's the director of the Institute for Immune, uh, Autoimmune and Rheumatic Diseases at St. Joseph's Health. Do you think I'd be able to say that without stumbling? Because we've said it every Friday for <laughs> a long time now, a doctor. But let's talk about what's happening in Los Angeles County. Uh, they clamped down on mask wearing this past weekend, requiring everyone to wear masks indoors, regardless of their vaccination status. You know, but federal officials say that they're not ready to sort of bring back any sort of mask mandates, not that they could do that federally, but in terms of their guidelines, they're not willing to to do that. Um, do you think that maybe the CDC should change its guidance, just, you know, err on the side of caution? Yeah, I think I think that uh, the guidance is really tough because we have a lot of complacency, as you seem to indicate. We also have a lack of confidence. So the hesitancy has gone through the roof. In those who do not want to be vaccinated and, and assays have, uh, you know, groups have been examined with regard to their attitudes and their attitudes are, well, you know, I'll take my chances. And I, I guess those are people who don't realize how serious this situation can be in the hospital or in the intensive care unit. So it is a, is a big problem in that regard. And we'll never get to 70, 75 percent vaccination if people believe that and be and, and they are continued to be complacent. They have to have confidence. And one of the things that the president is going to do is push, I guess, the FDA to try to get these officially approved 
Because what I'm hearing in the clinic and in groups is that this is not an FDA approved vaccine and therefore I don't want to take it until it's approved officially because it's still experimental. Um, yeah, Dr. Bob, it's such an interesting point because, you know, at the end of the day, people who choose to not become vaccinated, oftentimes you hear from certain states where we see that the vaccination rates are low. You hear people saying, well, we don't want to go back to any of these mandates, right? We don't want children to have to wear masks. We don't want to have to wear masks when we go to restaurants or to a concert. Um, and yet the reason we find ourselves back at this precipice is because people are unwilling to get vaccinated. So so what needs, I mean, in your mind, um, are we just going to have to live with the fact that COVID-19 is part of the, is in the population, and we, those of us who are vaccinated will just need these booster shots on a regular basis? I think, uh, Vlad, that's what I have been saying. I think that this is going to become an endemic virus. It's going to be with us forever and ever. It's never really going to go away, just like the flu is with us every year. Mm. Uh, we get our annual flu shot. I think we're going to have to get our annual COVID shot. Uh, maybe they'll be tied together with the uh, the influenza vaccine in the same injection so that people will either agree or not agree to get the shots together. Um, you'll know that certain institutions like universities and hospitals, and we see that here in the New York area, that the hospitals require or mandate that you be vaccinated in order to work, which makes a lot of sense, actually. And it's not really an infringement on personal freedom. It's really a public health matter. Mm. Let me ask you a question about, you know, schools starting up and uh, Boston and Atlanta, they're going to be requiring students to wear masks in class. Um, I'm wondering about what your concerns are as kids head back to class at the beginning of September, in some cases, the end of August. Um, kids under the age of 12, they're not eligible for the vaccine. Should kids keep masking up? keep distancing, you know, many of, should they keep many of the um, restrictions that were in place during the school year for the kids who were in the classroom, do they need to stay? Well, the CDC, the American Academy of Pediatrics is saying that all children below the age of 12 should wear masks because they're not vaccinated. I'm told that the vaccinations for those under 12 are going to appear probably before the end of the year, but that's well into the school year. Uh, the, the, on, the honor system of understanding that a parent will say, well, my kid has been vaccinated above the age of 12, uh, that we have to trust. And so we're saying that children or children in schools do not have to wear masks. However, before, below the age of 12, the American Academy of Pediatrics is saying, yes, they do have to wear masks. The CDC says no. The incidence of infection in little children is very, very low. The question here, and I'm sure it's very rare, is whether these little kids can transmit the virus to others, uh, older children, brothers and sisters, or parents, and or teachers, secretaries, and ancillary people within the school system. That's the question. Uh, Dr. Bob, on Wednesday, President Biden said full FDA approval of COVID-19 vaccines could happen this fall. Uh, what would that mean for the nationwide vaccine effort, specifically for folks who are vaccine hesitant, who say one of the reasons that they are hesitant is because it hasn't received the FDA approval? And also, what would it mean for businesses and institutions? Uh, one doctor suggested to me earlier today that it could mean that companies can become stricter in allowing people who are not vaccinated to not be on the premises of, 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 an, of a building or an organization. Yeah, I consulted with the legal experts and they said, as you say, Vlad, that if it's approved by the FDA, then they can mandate that people in businesses and indeed in schools as well be vaccinated. Mm. Uh, right now, there's a lot of a lack of confidence among uh, people, certain groups of people who feel that if it's not FDA approved, it's not good. It's, it's experimental. And that's simply not true. But that's the way people feel, and that's an excuse. It may be just an excuse that people are giving not to get vaccinated. But uh, we've made the vaccine convenient. We want to attack that complacency where I just don't care. You know, if I get the disease, I get the disease. Those people are unrealistic. And finally, confidence, which is what the FDA approval will do. And we hear from a lot of people that FDA non-approved, I'm not taking it. 
All right, Dr. Bob Lahida, as always on a Friday, Dr. Bob, we thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Vlad.